In 1837, Darwin put forward a unifying theory for all cellular life on our planet. Known as the Tree of Life, it outlined the evolution of all living things and expressed the idea that all life is related by common descent. The number of branches on the Tree of Life is still unclear, but the human ego might have us believe that we form the trunk. However, humans are just a very, very tiny twig deep in the undergrowth. It's actually microorganism like bacteria that make up nearly all of life's branches. They may be too small to see but we must never underestimate their importance. They are the foundation of the biosphere, both from an evolutionary and an ecological perspective. The diversity of the microbial world is both mysterious and spectacular. There's an estimated trillion species of microbe. Some live at boiling temperatures, or higher, in hot springs and deep sea thermal vents, others live at temperatures below freezing sea ice. But viruses are the most abundant, and, arguably, one of the most important organisms on Earth. They are found just about everywhere, from oceans to forests. They're inside us, on us, around us. The total number of viruses is staggering. It's estimated that they outnumber stars by more than 10 million. Yet viruses can't be included in the tree of life, because they do not share some of the same characteristics and properties of living cellular things. In fact, viruses are perfect molecular parasites. They depend completely on the metabolic machinery of cells, not only for their reproduction but also for their evolution. In the absence of cells, there is no viral evolution. So, viruses neither replicate nor evolve. They are evolved by the cell they enter. Given that viruses are not alive and cannot be included in the tree of life, it's ironic that they have had and continue to have such a massive impact on the evolution of life on Earth. Every bit of our body, inside and out, is covered in microorganisms, like bacteria, viruses and fungi. Yet, most of the time, we manage to live in this virus-filled world relatively free of illness. Viruses are extraordinarily picky about the cells they infect, and only a small fraction of the viruses that surround us pose any threat to humans. Perversely, viruses get no advantage from making people seriously ill, it's simply a byproduct of the encounter. In fact, viruses have actually been proved to be crucial to the origins of life. Rarely do we witness the ugly side of viruses, but there is no doubt they have caused some of the most dangerous diseases in history. The plague, smallpox, yellow fever, seasonal influenza and other contagions have all killed hundreds of millions of people around the world. Most of the new infectious illnesses enter the human population by jumping from animals to humans. This is known as zoonosis. Mammals and birds alone are thought to host about 1.6 million types of viruses, and only 1% of them have even been identified. Many zoonotic agents cause little or no signs of disease in their natural hosts. Bats and birds, for instance, have found a way to coexist with viruses. Usually, it's an intermediary that will infect a human. These spillover hosts are infected with the virus by the natural hosts and they might present with moderate to severe disease symptoms. But in most of the animal to human crossovers, the virus stops there and doesn't spread from person to person. If it does, we've got a viral epidemic on our hands. COVID-19 has now clearly shown that outbreaks of new human viruses do sometimes happen and have the potential to become a pandemic. 
COVID-19 is caused by SARS-CoV-2, now the seventh coronavirus known to infect humans. Most of the time, the human coronaviruses only cause mild respiratory illnesses like the common cold, but some, like MERS, SARS and COVID-19 can cause serious illness or death. Fortunately, COVID-19 has a lower mortality rate than MERS and SARS, but it is much more transmissible than similar coronaviruses. A combination of factors, including class, race, pre-existing health issues, and geography makes some people much more vulnerable to COVID-19 than others. So, what does this mean in terms of personal risk? It seems it's human nature to look at imminent threat disproportionately or illogically. Preventable causes like heart disease will account for more deaths than COVID-19, but try telling the human brain that. Rarely has the threat of disease occupied so much of our thinking. How do we evaluate the impact of COVID-19 on our individual lives and society? And how do we balance the sacrifice of individual freedom and prosperity with the well-being of patients and healthcare workers on the front line? The danger of COVID-19 must not be underestimated, but we cannot let the anxiety of the virus control our entire lives. Let's enter the situation room to assess the current status of this pandemic.